Am I unmuted now? Is that good? Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, it was being tricky. Um, thank you so much uh, to Aaron Kent and Broken Sleep Books. Um, as you'll be, as you'll have heard, he kind of had this pamphlet foisted upon him, but he's been very welcoming. And um, it's a real honour to be included in this launch with the Broken Sleep authors. Um, thank you for having me with you. Um, and also before I read, Erin um, mentioned that these poems were translated into Greek. They were translated by Harris Psaras. So thanks are going out to him. And um, the pamphlet's also illustrated by Judith Ayal. And I wanted to ask Erin, so on, you know, you said about the, the mark on the other book being, so this one's like a little skein, isn't it? Is that special? Uh, that's our normal logo, actually. That oh, okay. was just a typical logo. Coincidental. <laughs> yeah, yeah, logo it works. Like a skein. Yeah, it works yeah. really well. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so um, I'm going to read the first few poems. These, uh, this series is called um, Ariadne, but it's from a longer series about um, Pasiphae, who, uh, if you've heard of her at all, it will have been as the mother of the Minotaur. Um, and I was kind of intrigued by her story and trying to kind of rescue her from this very single narrative of sexual deviance and sleeping with a bull. So I was trying to explore her stories, but at the heart of her story, of course, is, is the Minotaur. And um, uh, I was really troubled um, by him. And um, I read Tracy K. Smith saying somewhere that um, for Wade in the Water, like poems for her often start with a worry and I think that's how this felt for me, like a worry about who was this creature um, in the labyrinth whose sister was then an accomplice in his death. And I came across um, a lot of disability history about ancient Greece, um, which is fairly horrendous. So disabled children and often extraneous female children would be exposed and um, left to die or to the chance that somebody else might pick them up. So um, the idea kind of germinated of the Minotaur as um, a disabled child that pacify ye, the mother, chooses to keep and nurse and raise instead of exposing. So that's the kind of context for these poems. Pacify ye on the infant Asterios. At nine months old, Asterios still cannot lift his heavy head on its stem-like neck. Lie him on his stomach and you must turn his face to stop him being smothered. I massage him with almond oil each day, sweep across the soft skin of his belly and chest, his slender arms, then along his skinny legs, still drawn up like a frog's, press the soles of his feet to make him push back and guard against the talipes, uncurl each finger, knead in his palms. I talk to him about his perfect, shining limbs, his glowing skin, his wondrous face. I bind his skull, when I move, his eyes follow me about the room, but it is maternal Ariadne who makes him smile and gurgle, singing the songs I sang when she was a baby girl, or sniffing at his napkin bottom and wafting at her nose and making silly sounds, or hiding behind a goatskin rug to emerge, you'd think, from nowhere the way his face blazes in surprise. And this is Ariadne talking, who is his sister. Ariadne on my brother's falling sickness. The first time it happened, the total rinse out of his face, his eyeballs white as full moons, a tiny pairing of iris underneath each upper eyelid flickering, 
the tremor that built to a drumming of heels and a spasming of his arms and chest, a choking sound at his throat and his mouth frothing like sea foam, a spreading darkness across the front of his robes where he'd pissed. We were all afraid. Not my mother. She crouched beside him and stroked his hair and whispered to him said his name over and over until he came back from that other place and stilled, then woke and began to cry weakly in her arms. She rocked him then and called him all the baby names, the two of them on the floor, her not caring about the piss, wiping his mouth and his face with the hem of her dress. The fits became frequent. We learned to watch for signs, an unusual slowness, a faraway stare. I learned not to be frightened. I copied my mother, would talk till he came round. But we hid him from the others. We'd all hurry him out of sight just in case he fell. And I think this led to talk to rumours of the horned child. Ariadne on Asterios' imprisonment in the labyrinth. Most people couldn't understand him. You had to listen. He had a way of speaking some sounds, some signs, give, please, help, and usually about our mother, mine. Ma was mother, obviously. He called me knee. He'd tilt his head if he wanted to be petted, could sway it for a no and nod for yes. Sometimes he was rough but I could manage him. The trick was to kick him behind the knees and he'd fold like a pile of blocks. We had a sign for sorry. You patted your chest. Sometimes I find myself patting there still, that blighted sorry place, as I apologise to him, lost in that far away forgetting zone. After his imprisonment, I'd lead him out at night. Daedalus showed me the way, the concealed door, the lock, the thread. At first, my brother would run like mad ahead of me along the path, head down, making his noise for happy, tacking back and forth. Often, we went to the beach and swam in the dark the water firing all around us with tiny phosphorescent sparks. He'd spout the water out of his mouth like a joyous black-furred dolphin. When he was tired, he'd lie on the damp sand and watch the extravagant sky, a little noise for each slip star, the Milky Way reflected in his eyes. For months, it was enough. But we are grandchildren of the sun. It sickens us not to feel its blaze. After a while, I could barely coax him out at night. And when we sat, all he would do was rest his head against his knees and slump and rock. Then he became so thin he could hardly walk. I'd lead him tottering out and he'd sink to the ground too weak to make the beach. He stank of piss. I was afraid, but couldn't think of how to get him free. I made excuses to visit less and was ashamed. One night he turned his face to me and tilted so I'd stroke his cheek and signed the words slowly. Clearly, I heard them plain as if he'd placed them singly in my brain. Want, 
die. And then he made the sign for help. Brother, look at me now. I'm signing sorry. It took me months to say yes. It took me years to find a way. And by the time he came with his swagger and deceit, looking under his eyelashes at our sister Fedra, you'd lost all speech. You were eating your own feces. You didn't know me. You didn't know yourself. Um, thank you so much for listening and thank you so much again for letting me share in the broken sleep launch even though this book was forced upon you <laughs> thanks Aaron